Hey guys, it's Drew back with Drew Dust Trucks. I had somebody ask me the other day where I hook my breakaway switch to. Now for those of you that don't know, you pull on this switch, this pin comes out and it interrupts an electrical connection, actually completes an electrical connection. It'll hook your battery up, which in this case is in here, to your brakes and apply full brakes. So in case your trailer ever got disconnected from your truck and you're relying on these safety chains, the trailer brakes would kick on because ideally you always want this cable shorter than your safety chains. So here's an 86 F-150 I have here laying around the house. Um, a lot of people will hook their safety chains into here, which is fine, and they'll take that breakaway switch and hook it right into the same spot. So that's not advised. The reason why is, if you look under here, like this has a kind of homemade thing, but this is all one piece. So in the event that this receiver assembly fails right here, um, you're gonna lose the, the anchor mount you've chosen for your brakes as well, your breakaway switch. So that's not ideal. Um, you want to go somewhere else. So on this truck, if you look um, right here, these these old trucks have solid steel bumpers. That's a real solid point you could put a hook in. Or if you look back underneath, um, we've got a spare tire mount that's pretty solid. We've got some holes in the frame that we could go to. Those would all be good spots to clip that uh, the uh, breakaway switch to. So I know some of you guys are saying, well, that's great on older trucks, but on newer trucks, when you look underneath, there's just not as much there. Right? So this is a F-350. I hook my safety chains here, but my breakaway switch, if we look around, we ideally want something that's off of this main tube, because if this hitch were to fail, since these are hollow, they tend to rust out in the metal, and you're going to lose your entire receiver and your safety chain mount. So if we look around, we do have some points here that are independent. And we have some hooks back on the frame, like right here. This would be a great spot to hook them up to. And I'm as guilty as the next guy. Sometimes I get in a hurry and I'll just keep them on right here if I have a second set of holes. At the very least, at least this is independent of this. So if these ripped out, you still have your, your breakaway somewhere else. Now, I had somebody ask me, well, what about could I come up here to this plastic or whatever? But as you can see, this plastic is not thick. And that can give rip out, hook or rip out. So this is uh, one of my trailers. I like to use these zip style connectors this is actually a zip brand um, you can see they're coiled so it makes this a lot easier to manage than those cable ones because this is automatically going to stay up out of the way and not drag on the cement and then it has this nice snap connector which um, you can put through a hole and it snaps or you know if you have like a, a hole in your frame you can also just kind of yeah, let's see if I can show you but you'll get it like this where it won't snap all the way and even that that's okay you know um, the breakaway switch on this trailer is mounted, I can't remember where it is on this one, but the point is you pull on this, this pin comes out, and then our breakaway switch, which is right here, it's actually holding up under the propane tanks here, that's going to apply the brakes. You saw how easy that was to pull out. So I don't have the brakes hooked up right now, so I'm not super worried about it. I'll put that switch back in a second. Now back with this older trailer. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I was working on this today. This is our breakaway switch. You see I have it looped around my hand. I weigh 250 pounds and I cannot pull that loose. Um, I pull it as hard as I can. <clears throat> so I'm not sure what is going on with this, but that is completely seized. Not everybody checks these before a trip, which is understandable. It's another thing to check. So um, this is not only seized that way, but this should always be mounted with one bolt so that it can um, follow the path of least resistance and swivel if a lot of force was exerted on it. <sighs> there it goes. And it's just about seized in place. So that's another problem. But if you had mounted this to your license plate hole or something else, it's just gonna rip that plastic or thin metal or whatever straight out of there, which is why I decided to make this video, hey, you got to mount this, ideally, independent of your hitch and someplace solid. Because this will pull out. This is steel cable. It's either going to break that pin or it's going to pull out. But if it's mounted to something cheesy, it's just going to rip right through it. So, stay safe. See you guys on the next one.